And you guys thought we were done with the Unifilter video. <laughs> All right, everybody, hope you are having a fantastic Friday. The weekend is right around the corner, and I know I have a ton of fun Tacoma projects to do. But before we do that, I am doing a follow-up video for the Unifilter mod and the secondary air pump seen right here because there's tons of questions about it. And I have just a little more information to share with you guys that if I had added to the first video, which was already like eight or nine minutes long, it probably would have doubled it. This is more like a Q&A and an info dump based on questions and comments I saw on the first video. So let's get right to it. Okay, so the most important question to answer is who actually has the secondary air pump unit which would in fact require the Unifilter mod if you want to go that route. This is just based on what I've been able to gather from people's comments and a little research. If you have any updates to this and I say something incorrect, please comment below and let me know. So as far as I can tell, none of the first gen Tacomas, whether it's the four cylinder or the six cylinder, have the secondary air pump. As far as the second gen Tacomas are concerned, all of the four cylinders, so that's 2005 to 2015, will have this unit. And instead of being back there like it is with mine behind the washer fluid reservoir, it is up here between the washer fluid and the radiator. If you have a 2005 to 2011 Tacoma V6, then you will not have the secondary air pump. However, if you have the later second gen model, so that's 2012 to 2015, like in my case, mine's a 2014, you will have the secondary air pump located in the same place I do right there. And as far as the third gen Tacomas are concerned, the four cylinders, uh, I saw a picture of an engine bay and it looks like they do have the secondary air pump, but the V6 models do not. A few people asked if you could just buy a replacement foam filter. Again, this is what I took out of my secondary air pump unit and replaced with the uni filter. And ideally, sure, you could just buy another one of these and swap that in, you know, every 25,000 miles if you wanted to be safe. However, I have not seen a part number just for this piece. You can get the whole assembly, you know, for a few hundred dollars, but I have not seen this part number by itself. And again, if you have found this somewhere scouring the internet, please comment below, post a link so we can share that with everyone else. A few people have asked if the Unifilter, and that's where I have mine installed, if it is washable or reusable. And I had one person comment on the last video saying that he has been reusing his, just like with the uh, K&Ns that you can wash off and clean with that special cleaner. Uh, so that's just based on one person's experience. I can't say for certain, but again, these are only like 13 to $15. So if you just wanted to buy a new one of these every year or two and swap it out, you could also go that route. A bunch of people commented on the condition of the filters and again this is what mine looks like after 45,000 miles it's just a little dirty on one side and honestly I could probably put this in for another 15 20,000 miles and be fine but you should definitely check yours if you have the unit of course because just because this is what mine looks like at 45,000 miles does not mean yours will look like this yours could be better it could be worse it just depends on where you're living I guess you know if you're living in a dirtier environment maybe a more moist environment, or even like if you're on the coast with all that sea air, or in a place that salts a lot. We salt, you know, a little bit in Northern Virginia, but definitely not as much as like the Northeast part of the country. So if you have the unit, check the condition of your filter just to be safe. And the next sensitive topic is warranty. If you decide to roll the dice and leave the Toyota foam filter in your secondary air pump and it does fail, is this covered under warranty? Well, this one's sort of tricky. I've had conflicting reports where people commented saying theirs was covered by warranty and Toyota completely replaced it free of charge. And other people said they had to pay for it out of pocket. I also had a few people say that emissions parts do have a 10 year warranty. So that might apply even though the rest of your truck might be out of warranty. The emissions parts does have a 10 year warranty. But again, some people within that 10 year window still had to pay for this out of pocket. So. It might just be one of those things where it sort of depends on the dealership you take it to and their reputation. I'm sure I don't have to remind you, but as we all know, not all dealerships are created equally. Some are great to deal with, and of course, some are less than ideal to deal with. Another important thing to bring up is what exactly happens when your secondary air pump or the valves over there, what happens when those fail? People have told me that your truck sort of goes into limp mode where you cannot go faster than 45 miles per hour 
and it's a little harder to control and I think on the dash they said their traction control light comes on on the dash. So that is what you get to look forward to if you roll the dice and stick with the factory foam filter. I did have a few people ask if you could use the factory foam filter with the new Unifilter and yes I suppose you could but the whole purpose of having the Unifilter on there is to eliminate the foam filter which is known to break down whereas the Unifilter will not do that I mean, even if it does it's not going to get sucked down into the pump so you could use both because the foam filter is over here underneath the cap and the Unifilter actually installs over here but again Certainly wouldn't recommend it, and even if you were running both of them, say if your foam filter was in perfectly fine condition, uh, you're going to have two filters on there, so it's going to be way more restrictive, which is maybe mess up your emissions and who knows, cause you to fail an emissions test if you have to do that. I know we do in Virginia, I think every two years, so just something to be aware of. One more thing to consider, I know in the previous video I mentioned you could just leave the cap off, I certainly wouldn't recommend it, and the reason is, you can see right here, this is the cap, I went ahead and removed it so you can see, it does have all this foam insulation on it, which when you reinstall it, you can see right there from the top, it actually covers the new Unifilter all the way up to the end here, so this will keep this watertight. For the most part, obviously, if you get direct water on it, some water could still get in there, and of course you could get some water from underneath. Like if you're going over puddles and such, might see if I can fashion some kind of mini splash guard for the bottom of the filter. But definitely reinstall your cap just to minimize that water problem because that seems to be uh, one of the bigger issues is uh, water getting into the system regardless of the condition of the factory foam and that's what actually causes the valves over here to mess up and freeze up and that's definitely the more expensive of the two fixes. So make sure you reinstall the factory cap. And again, personal opinion, but I definitely think it looks a lot cleaner with it installed. Also, make sure you save all of your factory parts, which will just be the foam filter right here. And then assuming you didn't destroy it, removing it will just be the factory uh, sort of water guard that actually went directly where the Unifilter is, where I have it now. So save all these because if you do have an issue, and I'm not condoning this, but if you need to take it in for warranty work. Obviously Toyota is not going to fix the unit under warranty if you have an aftermarket part on it. And again, I don't condone this, but it's just a five minute reversal fix to get these factory parts back in if you wanted to go that route. Also, you might want to save all these stock parts you remove because if you live in a state that does visual emissions inspections, California, I'm looking at you, then having the unit filter on there might cause you to fail that. So again, you can just swap this back in five minutes. And lastly, beginning in 2013, Toyota did change something on the ECU, so when you shut the engine off, the secondary air pump will continue to operate just for a few seconds to help force out any moisture that is in the system to combat that moisture uh, causing tons of damage with the valves over here, which I will demonstrate for you in just a second. I noticed, uh, before I never noticed it, but I now that I notice it with the Unifilter, which I assume because it is much less restrictive, you can certainly hear that whistle, so I'll go ahead and show you what that sounds like now. All right, everyone, thanks for stopping by. That is it for this video. I wanted to get a bunch more information for the Unifilter. Help me grow the channel by sharing it with your friends and family on social media. Enjoy your weekend, and I will see you in the next video.